Hi everyone, here to wrap up our math lessons for this week. We have the end of the chapter review and I have it broken down into two parts for you. Um, so you can choose to do both parts right now together with me or you can separate them um, if you think you need a little break in between or want to stretch them out throughout the week. Um, but basically, it's the last eight pages of chapter 12, and we're going to start with the first four pages, and it begins on page 753. So this is part one. Part one. So number one says, which words describe this shape? Mark all that apply. So when we look at the shape, is it a polygon? Remember, a polygon has to be closed up. It has to be made of straight line segments, and it has to be a plain flat figure. And this shape meets that criteria. So yes, it is a polygon. Is it an open shape? No, because if it was open, it wouldn't be a polygon. Is it a pentagon? A pentagon has five sides, so let's count the sides. One, two, three, four, five. So yes, this is a pentagon. Would this shape be a quadrilateral? No, because that would mean it has four sides. Number two, Umberto drew one side of a quadrilateral with four equal sides and no right angles. Draw the other three sides to complete Umberto's shape. So if he drew a quadrilateral, that means it has four sides. And it said his four sides are equal and have no right angles. So that means he drew a rhombus. Now we have to figure out how long his first side was. So it is one, two, about three, um, diagonals. One, two, three, something like that maybe. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. Ah, uh, it's not perfect, but it is close enough. Actually, I'm going to try that again. Otherwise, it would bother me. I think we got to come more down to here and then up and then across. I don't know. Does that look any better? They really pick a tricky shape for us to draw. Anyways, as long as your shape is close to having four equal sides and it doesn't have any right angles, then you would have a rhombus. On number three, Three, it says Michael saw a painting that included this shape. For numbers 3A through 3D, we're going to select true or false. All right, so the shape has no right angles, true or false. False because it does have two right angles. Remember, a right angle is shown by that symbol in the corner. And it's when two line segments perfectly come together and create a perfect um, corner. 3B, the shape has two angles greater than a right angle. Remember, if it's greater than a right angle, it's called obtuse. And these two corners are right angles. There's only one obtuse angle and it's saying there's two. So I'm gonna say false again. Number three C, the shape has two right angles. Yes, we said that was true. And the shape has one angle greater than a right angle, one obtuse, and we said that was true. So false, false, true, true. Over to the next page, number four is a go deeper problem. We're going to use this Venn diagram that Fran used to sort her shapes. And her Venn diagram includes one side of polygons that have right angles, and then the other side is quadrilaterals. And then remember in the middle is where 
um, we would put shapes that are both polygons with right angles and quadrilaterals. So it says draw another plane shape that belongs inside the left circle of the diagram, but not in the section where the circles overlap. So it has to be a shape that goes in polygons with right angles, but it can't have four sides because then it would be a quadrilateral. So let's see what we can do. They already have a right triangle and they already have a pentagon, so that's a three-sided shape. We don't want a four-sided shape because then that would be a quadrilateral like the square and rectangle. They already have a five-sided shape, a pentagon. So what if we tried this? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be a six-sided shape. So that certainly is not a quadrilateral. And it has right angles, um, several of them actually. This would be a hexagon and it has five right angles and then it has one really big obtuse angle um, opening up. So this shape would certainly go in with our polygons with a right angle. Okay, part B, how can you describe the shapes in the section where the circles overlap? So where the two circles overlap in the middle, how would we describe those shapes? So the shapes in the middle, we would say the shapes are both polygons that have right angles and also quadrilaterals that have four sides. So they kind of fit into both categories. Okay, you can pause the video if you need a moment to jot that down. In the middle though of our Venn diagram, that would be um, the shapes that are both polygons that have right angles and are also quadrilaterals that have four sides. Okay, on number five, we need to match each object in the left column with its name in the right column. So if you look at the first one, look at the ends here. There's two arrow tips. So that tells us this um, object would continue on and on and on in both directions. So that means it is a line. The next one, if you look at the end, it has two endpoints, so that means it stops, which tells us it's a line segment. It is part of a line. The third one has one end point, but then it has one arrow. So it stops on one end and continues on and on and on in one direction. So that would be a ray. And the last one is simply just like a period or a Point, we would call it in math. So it's a particular location um, in space. All right, oops, here we go. Number six, describe the angles and sides of the triangle. So if we were to describe the sides and the angles, okay, so the triangle has um, three sides, but it wants a little bit more detail than that. How can we describe the sides? Are they all the same length? No. Are two of them the same length? Yes, this is that triangle I call like a TP triangle. It has two sides that are exactly the same. It would be the two sides falling down. And um, if you remember from watching my video last week, we would call those isosceles triangle. Um, we would call this an isosceles. Ugh. an isosceles triangle because of it having two sides that are equal. So it is an isosceles triangle because it has two equal sides. The angles, how would we describe the angles? 
are all acute, which means less than a right angle. Okay, so two sides are equal, so that tells us it's an isosceles triangle, and then it has no right angles. Instead, it has all acute angles. Okay, again, if you need to, pause the video right now so you can write that down. Okay, number seven, which words describe this shape? Mark all that apply. So when we look at this shape, could we call it a rectangle? So think about a rectangle. A rectangle, typically we see um, it has two pairs of sides that are the same length, the top and bottom and the two sides. It has right angles in the corner and then the opposite sides are parallel. So could a shape such as the one we see here qualify as a rectangle? And the answer is yes. Would we call this shape a rhombus? By definition, a rhombus has to have four equal sides and opposite sides have to be parallel. So does this shape have four equal sides? Yes, are the opposite sides parallel, meaning are they directly across from one another, one another never going to cross or touch? And the answer is yes. So again, this would be a rhombus. Would this be a quadrilateral? Remember we learned quad means four. So does this shape have four sides? Yes, so this is a quadrilateral and is this shape a square? That's probably the first term everyone thought of when they saw that shape. So yes, it is a square because squares have to have all equal sides and they have to have opposite sides parallel, just like a rhombus, but then they have to have four right angles. Okay, number eight, divide each shape into the number of equal parts shown. Um, then write the fraction that describes each part of the whole. So we need to take this square and divide it into three equal parts. So as best as I can, I'm going to draw two vertical lines and that'll give me three total parts. And then when I write the fraction to describe each part, each one of these pieces now would represent one third of the whole shape. On the second shape, we have a hexagon and we need to divide it into six equal parts. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line and then two diagonal lines and that'll make a total of six parts. And each part would represent one sixth of the whole shape. And lastly, on number eight, it, uh, or not number eight, uh, the rectangle wants us to make eight equal parts. So I can first divide it in half. That gives me two parts. If I divide in half again vertically, that gives me four parts. And now I'm going to split each of those in half. Four parts there, four more parts equals a total of eight. So the fraction for this shape would be 1 eighth because each individual piece of the rectangle is 1 eighth of the whole. And I'm not really sure why this box is underneath that problem because there's nothing we need to write in that box. Um, so we're just going to move along. All right, number nine, Han drew a triangle with one angle greater than a right angle. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight that because that's important. One angle greater than a right angle. So that means obtuse, for those of you that learned that um, terminology, the vocabulary with me. Um, so we need to say yes or no for the type of triangle he could have drawn. So the first triangle, does it have one angle greater than a right? Does it have an obtuse angle? This one is pinching in, it is acute. 
This one is pinching in. It is a cute. And same with the third. So no, it does not have an obtuse angle. 9B, we see this little symbol in the corner. So that is a right angle. And if a triangle has a right angle, the other two angles must be acute in order for it to close. So no, there are no angles greater than a right. How about 9C? Well, I see these two bottom corners, um, bottom angles are acute, but it does have one obtuse angle up at the top. So that is a yes. And then 9D, again, I see the two bottom angles are acute. They are really pinching in. And then up top, it does have one obtuse angle opening up greater than a right angle. So no, no, yes, yes for our answers. So boys and girls, that pretty much ends part one of the math lessons. Um, part two will be coming up next to finish out the last three pages of the end of chapter 12 review. You are more than welcome to continue hanging out with me. Um, this will be a shorter video than a lot of my other ones, or you can pause it and come back to this at another time, okay? So part two is up next. All right, so here is the beginning of part two of the math. Number 10 is where we left off. So it says to look at this group of pattern blocks. Part A says to sort the pattern blocks by size, sides. How many groups did you make? Explain how you sorted the shapes. So when we look at the sides here, the yellow pattern block is a hexagon, so it has six sides. The green triangle has three. The tan shape is a quadrilateral, specifically known as a rhombus, so it has four. The orange square has four sides. The blue shape is a rhombus, it has four sides. And the red shape is a trapezoid, so it has four sides. So we need to sort our pattern blocks by their sides. Do you see any way we can sort them? I see that we can take these four and group them together because they are all four-sided quadrilaterals. And then this shape would go in its own category because it has six sides. And then our green triangle would fit in its own category because it has three sides. So we could say I made three groups because one shape has six sides, one shape has three sides and four shapes have four sides. Okay? Then we go to part B, and if you need to, pause the video so you can catch up with your writing. I keep forgetting I'm typing, even though I make a lot of mistakes. Part B says to sort the pattern blocks by angles. How many groups did you make? So now we are going to look at the angles of our shapes. And so I'm going to erase all of that. <clears throat> all right, when we think of angles of shapes, we kind of always start with right angles because either shapes have right angles or they have angles that are greater or angles that are less. So when we look at these shapes, I only see one shape here that has right angles, and that would be our square. The rest of the shapes do not have right angles. Um, in fact, the hexagon has all obtuse angles. They are greater than a right angle. The triangle has all acute angles. They are all less than a right angle. And then the other three quadrilateral shapes have um, two acute and two obtuse angles. So I would say that we can sort these polygons by whether they have a right angle or by whether they don't have right angles. <clears throat> so for part B, I'm gonna say 
I made two groups. Um, one group has right angles and the other group does not. So we can make two groups to sort the shapes by their angles. Okay, number 11, Teresa drew a quadrilateral that has four sides of equal length. So four equal sides, but no right angles. Whenever I think of a quadrilateral with four equal sides, my first thought is always a square. But in this case, it can't be a square because squares do have those perfect right angles. And so since Teresa's shape does not have right angles, we're going to take a look at what her shape might be. And so it's kind of like a square, but the angles are pinched in a little bit. And you might have called this shape a diamond in the past. However, I'm hoping that you know its um, <clears throat> mathematical name. And this shape we would call a rhombus. Yeah, I really cannot type these days. Okay, so what we made here is a rhombus, or Teresa, I guess, drew the rhombus shape. Alrighty, over to the next page here. It says that Rhea used a Venn diagram to sort shapes. What label could she use for circle A? So when we look at all of the shapes in circle A, we're just looking at these three shapes here. And then the other circle um, would be all the polygons that have shapes of equal length. And then we have to consider that there is a center group which falls into both categories. So these are all polygons with equal length and squares have all equal sides. What do you notice about all of the shapes in circle A plus the middle one? Look at their angles. I think we could call them polygons with right angles because a square in the middle certainly has right angles and then the triangle has a right angle Rectangles have all four right angles, and then the pentagon has two right angles. <clears throat> all right, if we go to number 13, Colette drew lines to divide a rectangle into equal parts that each represent one sixth of the whole area. Her first line is shown draw lines to complete Colette's model. So she drew this first line. I'm just going to trace over it. That only gave us two parts, and she needs to have six. So that means we need to draw two more vertical lines to split this rectangle into a total of six shapes, um, six parts. And each part within this rectangle would represent one sixth of the whole thing. And I don't know again why they have that box underneath because there's nothing we need to put in there as an answer. We just had to draw lines to show six parts. Okay, number 14, Brad drew a quadrilateral. Select the pairs of sides that appear to be parallel. Okay, remember parallel, um, just like in the word parallel, those are the lines that are opposite one another. They'll never cross or touch. So our lines A and B parallel. Look at A across the top and B down the side. No, they are actually intersecting. How about B and D? Here's B and here's D. Are they parallel? Yes, they are opposite one another. They will never cross or touch. How about lines C and A? So here's line A, and then here's line C. They are opposite and will never touch, so yes, they are parallel. And then D and C, we would say no because they are intersecting. <clears throat> All right, over to our last page. 
Number 15 says to give two reasons why this is not a polygon. This kind of reminds me of the, the stone in Moana or like a shell of some sort. Um, but anyways, it is not a polygon. Why? Well, it is open and has curved paths. So because it's open and it has curved paths, it makes it not a polygon. It is just a plain figure. <clears throat> okay. Number 16, the triangle at the right has one angle greater than a right angle. What statements describe the other angles? So the one angle greater than a right would be this angle here because it's opening up wide. And we need to look at the other two angles and see what we could say about the other two angles of this triangle. At least one is less than a right angle. Would we say that that is true? At least one? Yeah, because actually both of them are. One angle is a right angle? No, we don't have any right angles. Both are less than a right angle. Yes, that is true. Both are acute. One is greater than a right? No, not of the other two angles. There is one angle greater than a right, the obtuse one, but we were looking at the other angles of this triangle. So letter A and C. Okay, number 17. <clears throat> Ava drew a quadrilateral with two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. The shape has at least two right angles. So what could she have drawn? Okay, so quadrilaterals have four sides, so we need a four-sided shape. Two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. Well, I'm thinking she could have drawn a rectangle because opposite sides are parallel. Okay, so these opposite sides are parallel. And it does have at least two right angles. In fact, it actually has four right angles. So she could have drawn a rectangle. She could have also drawn a square. It's not a very good square. Um, I like to use my cheat button up here. And <laughs> Okay, that's much better. Um, but opposite sides are parallel in my square, and then the two black ones there. And squares also have four um, right angles, okay? Those are probably the two most common ones that we would have um, come up with here on our own to match what Ava could have drawn. Um, you could have tried to draw another type of um, quadrilateral. Um, but honestly, if it has to have two right angles and two pairs of opposite sides parallel, to me it seems those are the only two shapes you could draw. Okay, so on our last one here, we just need to write true or false for each description of a ray. So we see an image of a ray. Is it straight? True, yes, it is straight. Does it have two endpoints? Here is one end point, but not on the other. So that would be false. Is it part of a line? Yes, it is part of a line. It's just not a complete line. In order for it to be a complete line, it would need another arrow end instead of the end point. Does it continue in one direction? Yes, because of the arrow on the right side, it would continue on and on and on in that direction. All right, so boys and girls, that ends your chapter 12 um, review. There is going to be a practice quiz put up on the Google Classroom underneath math resources. It is not graded, it is not mandatory, it is just an optional activity for you to test your knowledge on what you learned in chapter 12. And then next week, we will be going back into chapter 10 to finish up some of those lessons on measurement. And then after that, we will continue into chapter 11. And that should take us through the rest of our school year here at home.
Hope you all are doing well, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.